Today we welcome back Tobias from Surface Studio. He's got a sketch he'd like to show you for this effect, so I'll let him take it away. Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting HitFilm Express tutorial. In this video I really want to show you the 3D Particles add-on pack for HitFilm Express. The add-on pack includes the Particle Simulator which allows you to create some really exciting effects for fire, smoke, energies or the really cool killer frost effect that Walter used to kill my tea. This is going to be an intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you are pretty comfortable using HitFilm Express. If you're just getting started, there's tons of beginner tutorials on this channel that you can go and check out. But now, before I talk your face off, let's jump right into it. Welcome to the exciting world of HitFilm Express. As you can see, I have the 3D Particles add-on pack enabled that you can get from the HitFilm store and you will need this pack to follow along or use HitFilm Pro. But now, let's get into it and create a new project. Set the template to 1080p Full HD at 24 frames per second and then hit start editing. Let's bring the clip for this tutorial into our project and you will find a download link for this file in the video description below. Once imported, right click onto the clip and select to make a composite shot. I am going to call this one frost effect and then hit ok. This clip is a simple shot of water taking aim at my tea to turn it from steaming hot deliciousness into a lump of frozen flavored water. First. Because I want the particles for the frost effect to be emitted from Walter's moving hand, we need to extract the hand from the base footage. For that, duplicate the base layer and let's call this one Hand Roto. With the Hand Roto layer selected, use the pen tool to draw a mask around Walter's hand. No need to be super detailed here, but I do want a fairly tight fit to not include some of the highlights and reflections on the pantry door. Now expand the mask properties and under Transform enable keyframes for the path property. Then move through your footage and adjust the mask path to follow Walter's hands throughout the entire shot. Cool! I think that's good enough. Let's disable the visibility of the base layer and get this hand properly extracted. For that, search for and apply a color difference key to the hand roto layer. Over in the controls tab, open up the effect properties and let's change the screen color over to red. Bring up the min to round about 0.9 and then drop the max so it'll flip to maybe around 0.8. I might just bring up the gamma a little bit to remove a little bit more of the background around the hand. Next, let's clean this up a bit and what better effect to use than the matte cleaner. In the effect settings for the matte cleaner, let's bring up the smooth to maybe around 10 and let's check this out. Yep, I think that's good enough to work as a source for our frost particles. We now need to pre-compose this hand roto layer and all of the masks and effects so right click on the layer and select to make a composite shot. I will call this layer hand roto comp, make sure you move all of the masks and effects with this layer and then hit ok. Let's return to our frost effect composition, re-enable the base footage and let's finally add some particles. With the 3D particles add-on pack installed, under the Particles and Simulation tab in your Effects panel, you will find the Particle Simulator. This in itself is a layer, so in order to add some particles into your shot, simply drag and drop this effect directly into your layer window. I will call this new layer Frost Particles and if we scrub through, by default the Particle Simulator will spawn these round white particles in the center of the screen. While that's already extremely exciting, it's not really what we are after, so let's start customizing this particle effect. With the frost particles layer selected, in the controls tab you will find a section for emitters. Emitters are the sources for your particles and if you pop this open, you will see that there is already an emitter on this layer. Open up the emitter properties and let's first make the particles emit from Walter's hand rather than just being spawned in the center of the screen. For that, change the shape of this emitter from point over to layer. Open up the shape properties and now for the source layer, select our hand roto comp. 
The particles are now all colored according to this layer, but they are still emitting from everywhere. In order to constrain them to be emitted only from the hand that we extracted, enable the use layer alpha option in the shape properties. Now we're getting somewhere. The particles are now emitted from Walter's moving hand, which is very cool. Next, let's make them shoot toward the cup. For that, we can set the trajectory of the particles from random to target. Open up the trajectory properties and we now need to define the position the particles will fly toward. Since I know we will need to use the position of the teacup a few more times throughout this effect, let's track a point object to its position. You can use the 2D motion tracker if you want to, but it's a bit overkill for what we're after, so I am simply going to create a new point layer, call it cup target, and then move it to the position of the cup. Next, enable keyframes for the position property, scrub through your composition and reposition and animate the cup target so it follows the cup in my hand. Now let's go back to the beginning of the composite shot, right click on the position property of our cup target and select to copy. Let's dig up the position for our particle trajectory target and right click and then paste the keyframes here. Now the particles are flying toward the cup in my hand. But they just don't move fast enough to ever even get there. Also they seem to spawn way too early. So first let's have them start at the moment when Walter angrily points his hand at me. In the effect settings, within each emitter you can have multiple particle systems. If you expand this tab, you will see that our emitter already has a particle system in it and here you can customize the behavior, look and feel of all of your particles. Open up the general tab and let's animate the particles per second property from 0 to maybe a thousand at the moment Walter's arm is fully extended. This will make the particles spawn at the correct time. Then. Open up the movement tab and let's jack the speed of these particles up to maybe 1200. Let's check this out and nice. Still a long way to a frost effect but you can start to see the effect we're trying to build. Next let's tweak the look of our particles a little bit. For that open up the appearance tab in the particle system settings and in here you can make your particles look any way you want. Let's change the texture source to inbuilt and now under the texture settings the 3D particles add-on includes a whole bunch of really cool presets. The one I kind of like for the frost effect is the Aurora Borealis. Because I want the particles to look in the direction they are moving, let's enable the align to motion option as well. Now that's a big blob of particles so let's tweak their size a little bit. In the movement tab you will find an option for scale and let's bring this down to round about maybe 20. Now that looks a little bit like a swarm of hornets so let's come back to the appearance and change the blend mode over to add to create more of an energy effect look. To make the particles look a little bit more natural and not so uniform you can add variation to both the appearance and the movement of your particles. Let's open up the movement variation tab first and I will set the live variation to 0.5 of a second, the scaled variation to around about 40% and the speed variation to maybe 200. Let's check this out and yeah, we are getting closer. Next, let's look at how you can control the color, transparency and other aspects of your particles over the course of their short life and for that you can use the lifetime panel. You can bring this panel up by going up to the main menu, clicking on this little grid icon here and enabling the lifetime panel. Let me bring this in a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. In this panel you will find all of the properties that you can animate and control over the life of a particle. If this panel appears blank for you, make sure that you have a property within the particle system selected and let's first manage the color. So select the color in the lifetime panel and at the bottom change the type from off to gradient. This will enable a gradient color editor and you can click just below this line to add new keyframes, customize the color and in order to remove a keyframe simply drag the little tag off to the side. I am going to add a few keyframes to have my particle start out with a very bright blue and then transition slowly over to a slightly darker more saturated blue towards the end of their life. Finally let's set the mix with appearance from off to first keyframe and if this does nothing at all bring in the first keyframe over to the right a little bit and you can now see that the particles start out with their original color taken from Walter's hand and then transition into this nice frosty blue. Next let's control the transparency and make this effect a little less thick. 
Select the alpha option, change the type over to gradient and let's add a few keyframes and bring down the overall opacity. I am going to start out fairly bright and then transition over to a serrated transparent particle and slowly fade out towards the end of their life. Finally, enable the motion blur switch for this layer and let's check this out. Yeah, I think that is starting to look pretty cool. Finally, let's make the particles actually hit the coffee cup and bounce off. Let's close down the lifetime panel for now and on the frost particles layer, which is our particle simulator, you will find a place to add both deflectors and forces to your particle systems. Since we want the particles to hit or deflect off the teacup, let's add a deflector by clicking on this little plus icon over on the right hand side. Open up the deflector properties and expand the shape tab. Again, we want this deflector to follow the movement of the cup and for that, again, make sure you are at the very beginning of your composite shot and then copy and paste the position from our cup target point layer over to the position of the deflector. Next, let's change the shape a little bit and I will disable the lock for uniform scaling and then set the scale to something like 20 by 200 by 200. I think I will also rotate the deflector slightly, maybe by 5 degrees in the Z axis and aim it a little bit downwards. Let's check this out. And that is working pretty nicely. Also, just FYI, if you don't like that the particle beam effect is a little bit off target, that is caused by the time delay that the particles take to travel from Walter's hand to the cup and you can compensate for that simply by pulling forward the trajectory target keyframes on the frost particles so that they aim at where the cup will be rather than where the cup is right now. Cool, I think that works a bit better. Now, I don't like that the particles are appearing over Walter's hand, so let's fix that up. Simply drag the hand roto comp layer on top of the frost particles. And voila, that's it. But let's make this just a tad cooler and add a bit of a glow to the hand as well. So apply a glow effect to the hand roto layer. In the effect settings, let's change the blend mode over to add and then adjust the threshold and intensity to create something like a glow coming from the inside of the hand. You can also tweak the per channel intensity to give the effect a little bit more of a blue or a greenish tint, so just make it work for you. Finally, animate the intensity to fade this effect in just as the particles start emitting from Walter's hand. Awesome, that is looking pretty nice. Next, let's add some impact particles that emit from around the cup so it looks like the particles are exploding where the frost beam is hitting me. For that, let's drop another particle simulator effect into our composite shot and let's call this one Impact Particles. In the effect controls, under the emitter, change the shape from point over to circle. Then open up the shape properties and now change the attached to layer property to our cup target point layer. This will cause the emitter to automatically follow the movement of our cup. Next, within the settings for the particle system, animate the particles per second from 0 to around about 300 just as the frost beam starts to hit. Wow, okay, we have impact. But to make this look a little bit more realistic, let's also add some gravity so the particles actually fall down rather than floating off into space. In order to do that, on the impact particle layer, let's add a force by clicking on the little plus icon right next to the forces option. Open up the force settings and in here you won't have to change anything at all since the default is already nicely set up to add gravity. Just know that in here you can tweak all sorts of other cool stuff to control how your particles are affected by this force. Right now, since our particles seem to be more drooping rather than exploding and then falling down, let's come into the movement settings for our particle system and give them a little bit more speed, maybe around about 400. Yep. I think that looks a little nicer. Now let's make the particles look a little bit more interesting and feel free to customize this to your liking. In the appearance tab I will set my texture source to inbuilt and then select the shockwave plasma trail option as my texture. Enable align to motion and change the blend mode to add and right now that's just a little bit too intense for me to handle. So let's hop back over into the movement tab and bring the size of the particles down to around about 20. To add some variation, under the movement variation tab I'm going to add 0.5 of a second for life, around about 40% for scale and 200 for speed variation across the individual particles. Finally, I might also come into the appearance tab and add just a little bit of color variance of maybe around about 50 or so. Let's check this out. 
Cool, I think that'll work. Let's once again open up the lifetime panel and start tweaking the color and the alpha for these particles over the course of their lives. Now I am doing nothing new here, I will simply have their color fade from bright to dark blue and fade them out towards the end of their lifespan just like we did with the frost particles. Once you're done, close down the lifetime panel, be sure to enable the motion blur switch on the layer and let's check this out. Yep, almost there. To add a bit more detail to this effect, let's have the particles bounce off the kitchen counter. For that, let's add a new deflector to the impact particles layer and let's move this one down to the kitchen counter. In the deflector properties, in the shape tab, you will find a scale setting. Let's disable the uniform scale lock, then set the scale to something like 500 by 100 by 300. And now, if you play this back, you will have the particles bounce off the kitchen counter. That's really cool. The last two touches I want to add to this effect are a lens flare and a little bit of a reflection of the frost effect itself on the kitchen counter. For the flare, simply create a new plane layer. I'm going to call this one flare. Make sure the layer color is set to black, hit OK and then apply a light flares effect to it. Change the blend mode of this layer over the screen and then in the effect settings for the light flares effect, I'm going to change my flare type over to digital blocks but feel free to choose whichever flare you fancy. Then pop open the hotspot position, change the center to 0, 0 which will place the flare right in the center of the screen but then change the use layer option over to our cup target. This will make the flare automatically follow the cup in my hand. Now animate the intensity to come in with the frost particles hitting the cup. Nice. Finally for the reflection on the kitchen counter, select the frost particles and the hand rotor layer and pre-compose them. I will call this one frost particles comp and then hit ok. Return to our main composition and now duplicate this frost particles comp layer. Let's call this copy reflections and position it so that the beam itself is over the kitchen counter where you'd expect the reflections of the beam to appear. Then create a new plane layer, let's call this one reflection matte and then hit ok. Disable its visibility but with it still selected use the pen tool to draw around the surface of the kitchen counter. Re-enable its visibility which is actually very important and then pre-compose this layer. Let's call this one reflection matte comp and be sure to move all of the masks and effects with this layer. Return to the frost effect composite shot, disable the visibility on the reflections matte comp as we don't need to see it anymore and let's apply a set matte effect to the reflections layer. Open up the effect settings and change the source layer from none over to our reflections matte comp. Because this will look rather awful, change the blend option from replace to subtract and then enable the invert option. Nice, we now have this particle effect confined to the surface of the kitchen counter. Let's just blend it in a little bit nicer and for that let's first add a blur effect to the reflections layer. Be sure to place the blur effect before the sand matte effect otherwise the blur will bleed over the edges. In the effect settings increase the blur radius to around about 20 and let's also bring down the opacity of this layer to around about 30. Finally change the blend mode of this layer over to add and with that we have really nice reflections on the kitchen counter. So now at last zoom back out and let's make some space so we can actually see our completed shot. Then rewind, unselect everything and let's play back our final frost particles effect. And that is all there is to it. If you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Tobias from Surfaced Studio. Thank you very much for watching and until next time I will see you later.